right, so we're checking to see what is Sven going to do today. Well, today we're going to be doing a bunch of coding. And so hold on to your hats, folks. Get out your notebooks and your quill pens because we're going to be doing coding. Um, I did want to shout out real quick to Drake Takes who helped me compile and make the video. Um, he does great work there. He's made a couple of my other game videos that I use. Also, Marbania, he did the music for that. So thank you again, both of you guys, for your help with those. So the, what we're doing right now is we're looking at the sp different spells. So I have players who, like yours, I'm sure, enjoy upcasting or um, their spells. So this player is a monk. I mean monk. I don't know where I came up with monk. This player is a bard cleric. And so when you, I'm going to go ahead and check my notes. Here it is. Boom. Cross off what we're doing now. So with these, uh, whenever you multi-class spellcasters, the way Internet D and D does it is is a little little interesting, um, and I, I like it. Um, being a multi-caster, a multi-class caster myself. Um, I played one before. I like the dynamics. It's, it's pretty cool. The way it works is your spell slots are separate from your classes. In other words, the number that you have is not respect. It's respective to the classes. It's respective to your class level. So she is ninth level. And as such, she has the ability to cast 5th level spells. She is a bard cleric. Neither one of her classes allow her to cast 5th level spells because you have to be ninth level to cast 5th level spells. Um, but because her character is ninth level, she can cast 5th level spells. So the way it works is within her two classes, bard and cleric, she picks her spells known is just like any other bard of that level. So she is a bard four, cleric five. So she is a fourth level bard, and as such, she gets to know, I believe it's second level spells. So in her actions page, she has first and second level bard spells. I'm in a quarter cantrips. Now, the cool thing is because she's a multi-caster, she can cast any of those spells all the way up to 5th level. So she can take her 2nd level Heat Metal spell and cast it at 5th if she wanted to. Um, so that's how Multicaster works. Same thing with her Cleric spells. Uh, as a 5th level Cleric, she now knows 3rd level spells. She can cast any of these spells up to her 5th level um, with, with her uh, up to fifth level, so pretty cool the way they do it, and I like it. So what we're doing here is we're changing. She uses spiritual weapon almost all the time. Most clerics, honestly, who have it, have a tendency to do that. So spiritual weapon. Um, for those of you with smaller screen, I'm sorry, we're not going to be in here very long, so I didn't change the UI. Um, so you probably won't be able to read this unless you're using a PC. But basically it says at higher levels, when you cast a spell of third or higher, the spell increases damage by 1d8 for every two slots above second. So what I'm doing, uh, as you can see here, it says spiritual weapon upcast to level 4, extra damage 1d8. So that's all, that's an effect that she we made so when she casts it it reminds her oh this is supposed to be doing an extra 1d8 so what Leon what we're going to do though is we're going to go ahead and add up here right click action add damage and so the spell does 1d8 plus her spell casting modifier which is 5 
this time we can take two, one, two, right, if you hold, left click a, a die, and then right click on it, it will then uh, double that. Hey, Remedies is in the, his house, watching some of your stream last night when you were messing around. Those of you watching this later, Remedies is R-E-M-E-D-E-E-Z. -E -E Check her out. There's a lot of live play. Does some D&D uh, uh, &D prep, fancy ground prep. Um, so similar to what I do here, um, but she does a lot of, uh, it's not conversion, but it's um, she, she writes her own stuff. She's on DMs Guild. Great stuff. I use a lot of her stuff in my Sven Solo campaign. If you take a look at that, also on uh, a couple of my campaigns, use her whimsical heroes that she used, uh, where she makes anamorphic people. So if you like, ever thought of running a giraffe man, or a hippo female, or a skunk person, Remedies is the one who did all that. Very well written, well balanced for 5e. It's awesome stuff. Um, Anyway, so taking the two dice, then you put in here, you put the for her wisdom is this that she uses, and the type is force. All right, and so now we go back and change this to the original. If you right click on the dice. You can then clear it, and you just drag the 1d8, boom. So now she has the 1d8 and the 2d8. When she casts, she upcasts it, she can um, click, click on the effect, boom. And that adds it to herself so we remember from week to week or even from round to round that she upcasts it, and then she know, remembers to do the second damage. Um, could you could do this the same thing with her other spells so for example heat metal as a second level um, I could upcast that uh, she does have a tendency to do that so I'm actually going to do that for this one but for the other ones I'm not really going to worry about it um, her uh, guiding bolts and um, aid and things like that the other spells that she could upcast she doesn't use them enough to warrant that so uh, if, if that changes, of course, we can just easily add it. All right, so I th think I just don't want to die on Monday. <laughs> yeah. I am flattering her, um, but it, it's, uh, it's not flattery if it's true. I don't know if that's the right, correct statement or not, but yeah. I know it's not an insult if it's true. So maybe it's not a flattery if it's true. Yeah, we're going to be starting a new campaign Monday night, late. Uh, it's going to be fun, a little one-shot where she DMs. She's DMed uh, for me a couple times before, and it's always enjoyable. So far, at least. Who knows? Maybe she'll crap the bed on Monday. We'll see. I highly doubt it. So, Heat Metal. When you cast a spell using third or higher, the damage increases by 1d8 for each spell slot above second. So again, we go to our heat metal spell. This is a bard spell. I'm going to close some of these. Pink. And by the way, if you have several people in your... Uh, caps what i'm sorry robin the uh so i'm still trying to figure out all the ins and outs of nightbot um twice now it's it's stopped legit spammers from posting stupid things um but the, uh, i'm i'm learning to uh <laughs> i'm learning to adjust because i had a friend who just spammed like four emojis and it blah 
it blanged him, so I uh, changed it to now you can do up to, I think it's 10 emojis. I also don't know how many, so like you did LOL and LMFAO, all caps, in two different messages, and I don't know if it keeps count all the way through all your messages. So, anyway... I'm sorry. I apologize. I trust remedies to uh, uh, I wonder if there's a way to say for friends make a friends list. All right, so um oh it you believe me this is uh I uh, Somebody interacting with me on a chat is not, is well worth the distraction. I enjoy it. Okay, so she does upcast heat metal. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do the same thing. Um, I don't know that we need an effect. I think what I'll do is this. What I'll do is I'll just copy this one. So we're going to add an effect. Right click. Go over here to action and then straight down to add effect. And then open up this new effect. We're going to use the same thing we did here, which is heat metal concentration. And that is a semicolon with brackets, slef. That automatically applies it to herself. She doesn't have to have herself targeted. But what we're going to do is we're going to say heat metal upcast. So that way she will remember that she upcast it. And what the C does is that puts it concentration. So if she ever gets hit, takes damage, it will then roll the concentration check. So now we just simply do it for the damage. So this, this, uh, heat metal is a second level. She so can go up to fifth. So all we do is we go right click, add action, damage. That is third. This is fourth. This is fifth. So it's 2d8. And it's fire damage. So we can open this up. Go here, we go click, click. Again, left click, hold, right click it to add a second die. Throw it down in there. Type is fire. Increase it for one to each for by one d8. So we go boom, three d8, fire. Now you could just add the dice two, three, four. Oh, they changed it. Okay, never mind. Never mind. But you still would have to add, open it up to add fire anyway. So I just do it this way. The other thing you can do. That's one thing you'll learn about Fancy Grounds. There are lots of ways to do things. Is you can go in here and then you can click on the plus, and it brings up an empty one. There we go. All right, so now she can upcast this all the way up to fifth level. So that's how you tweak the codes. Very simple, very easy. All right, so that's pretty much it for this one. Let's check my message of the day and check my calendar. So the message of the day pops up when as soon as they log in. 
I have found that some of my players have the annoying habit of just closing it. But what can I say? All right, so that's on them. I'm, I've given them the tools they need. It has images right there. It's like a map. Uh, I, I, I show the map typically, and I give a quick recap of what happened last week. Um, and the reason I know they don't read it is because a couple times I said, Hey, uh, so I was just simply saying this for the sake of the stream. Hey, so you want to give us a recap of what happened? I don't remember what happened last week. I don't remember what I have for breakfast. I'm like, it's in the message of the day. It says right there. But that's okay. Um, I'm still going to do it anyway because I'm that type of DM. So last week, they just all they did was they fought a bunch of people. And we're talking like 25 people. So it's in a quick, just a quick recap of the group. Continued exploring. The basement. And came upon Barracks. Wow. Of the Spine Devils and Maragon. So I'm going to add those quick pictures in there. So I already have the picture of the map. So I'm just going to add a couple pictures of the critters they fought. As a quick reminder, if you as a DM have not used Marigons, um, you should check them out. They are very, very, the creep factor is really high. Let me wait for uh, Fancy Grounds to catch up with me. Here it is. So, this is what they look like. They are these huge buff bodies with this odd baby mask made of bronze, and they use halberds, so they have a reach of 10 feet. Uh, really creepy. Really nice. Um, use, use them for effect. They are fiends. Boom, I'm just pulling up my spine devil, throwing that in there, boom. So now they have three images. They have their map, and then they have their, the two things of what they fought. And it's one sentence, one sentence. I mean, even by accident, as you're moving your mouse up to close the, press the X, I'm hoping they'll be able to read the sentence. I guess we gotta wean them in, you know? Bring them in gradually and increase it. I'm also considered saying, hey, if you private message me as the DM that you read this, I'll give you a potion of healing or, you know, 100 ex experience points or something. All right, so that's what we need to do. For that, check the calendar, and we're done with this campaign. We're going to switch over to a different campaign real quick. So I use the calendar. It's up here. Um, if you don't have it loaded, I cover that in a couple other videos I have. Um, or just ask me in the comments, and I'll, I'll show you how to do it. It's very easy. Once you've got your calendar that you want, double-click on the day you're in. This helps me keep track of time and where it's, what's going on. All right, so this one, see, yeah, so all I have is that they came to this keep. So 
So that's where they are right now. They're inside this keep, surrounded by lava, magma. So they got here at 2.30. Um, so they fought. They explored. They went upstairs. So I'm going to say it took them about 20 minutes. I'll give them a half an hour to uh, search the top, what they did of the top. So at 1,500. To the basement. And right, and so right now, it is 1,500. And the cool thing about the calendar is the phone's about to die, so I'll put you on my desktop. I won't be able to talk much, but I'm here in spirit. Woohoo! I am well, Broken Mold Live. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Um, I really do. Feel free to uh, check this out later today on um, YouTube. So uh, if you have any questions, Broken Mold, feel free to leave them in the comments on YouTube. And I'll be able to cover them. And uh, I'll probably see you tomorrow because you're that type of awesome guy. As I do Starfinder. All right. So the cool thing is about the calendar is you can just click right here. This little speech bubble gives them in the chat. It gives them the date and it gives them the time. So talking about players not reading stuff, the players, your players have access to your calendar. So they can, my players right now can go all the way back to, let's see, one, two, three weeks and double click on any day and see what they did that day. Um, based on the notes I kept. The sad thing is right now, at least, the uh, players can't add anything to the calendar. And of course, they can't read where it says GM. But I use this a lot. I have a campaign where they're captives. Um, and so what I did was I um, have all my timeline and all my notes up in a GM section. So they don't know for sure what day or time or, or it is at, on any given point because they're underground. They have no reference for time. Um, but that's this way I just use my calendar um, even more so than my storyline pretty much because I, I want to keep track of, of what's happening and, and resting, how soon they can rest and they travel a lot so it's been fun using the calendar to its extent in that campaign all right so we are finished with this we've updated our our calendar so we're going to go ahead and go and open that campaign and what we want to do here is we're going to do similar things they just leveled up to level two and what I, I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and just check and make sure all of their actions for their new classes are well, I just updated before I started the stream dude so I'm gonna wait I don't want to waste your time doing that boom So we're going to check and make sure that their actions, class actions, are all up to, up to date for second level. And I'll show you how to do that once we get there. Give me just a moment. Got a new, I moved my monitors around. So as I, I've had a couple monitors that I've been working with. And I was familiar with moving my mouse between the two. Now I picked up an extra one from work because they were getting rid of their old monitors. So I now have three and trying to remember how to get my mouse from point A to point B. I just set this up. Um, this is like 45 minutes into using this setup. So it's pretty cool. Hold on just a moment, guys.
So the nice thing about the setup that we're doing here is what had happened was the group was, when they first met, were headed toward Baldur's Gate. Um, two of them were a uh, raccoon person, Robin Nix's. Uh, I had to mess with the mouse setting a bit, I think, or was it the monitor settings? Um, no, it was just, I just have, when you extend a monitor over multiple monitors, they're numbered, and so you can arrange where they are, so you can have, um, the physical setup right now I have is two on the bottom and one in the center above both the th my third one, is uh, up in the middle. So, right now, so I, in order to move my mouse, I can move it from here, and then I, if I go to the left on my bottom mouse, it goes up to the, my top monitor. And if I go all the way to the left, it then shows up on my second bottom monitor. So it's just a matter of remembering, um, oh, I need to go over here. So I'm going here, and I'm like, the mouse isn't here. Where the heck is my mouse? Oh, that's right, it's still up here. And so, that's all it is. Just some by... The time I'm done with this stream, I should be good to go and have it set in my mind where it all is. So that was, that's, believe me, it's not a huge deal. It's just a matter of, um, I have hard enough time knowing where my mouse is in the first place, much less moving it from s s monitor to monitor. But I have five, six players, and so two of them were wizards who were traveling together. Uh, Raccoon Man from Robin Nix's Whimsical Characters on DM's Guild. Check it out. Uh, Whimsical Heroes. Uh, and they ran into a kobold. Um, and so he sort of talked to them and, and uh, decided to then join up with them uh, as they were traveling. Uh, they were all pretty much outcasts anyway. Um, you have a really intelligent kobold, uh, and you have a raccoon man and a tiefling who have been kicked out of his clan. So the three of them were traveling into a town. Um, as they were going into the town, at the, it was just like an hour after sunset. Uh, these giant rats attacked this mastiff. They killed the giant rats, but the rats had killed the mastiff before... Um, they were able to do that uh, before they were able to kill the rats. And so they were in the middle of this town. So the townspeople had started coming out and saw them, this raccoon man, a tiefling, and a kobold standing over the corpse of this dog that everybody loved. So they got blamed for it and they got thrown out of town um, and were, they remember seeing some ruins outside of town so they decided well we'll just sleep there for the night it's already really late um, so they were on their way there when flip over to the second the other group um, a gith yankee and a gith zoray uh, it's a whole story behind them they were walking they had a quick encounter with the snurf neblin um uh snurf neblin are like smurfs but really mean um and they they were attacked by them, uh, and they saw these ruins and decided to head toward there to spend a the night there because it was already after dark. So the two groups sort of saw each other, and then they had another uh, um, <laughs> for Neblin, a horrible word. <laughs> what the heck is taking my fancy ground so long? Wow, it is normally not this long to load up a campaign. I should, probably should have just updated like it told me to. I'm being punished now because I didn't update. Um, so the two groups got together and they saw these uh, two skeletal dogs were being harassed by these mud methods. And so the two of them sort of from opposite sides of the, of the path interacted with that, drove away the mud methods, of course, now the skeletal dogs attack them. Um, and so as they were heading toward these ruins, a drow hunting party, all unbeknown to them, 
unseen by them at this point, uh, attacked them, captured them, and took them to down below in the Underdark. So that's where they were. They travel. They did. None of the, the players know this, but they traveled for almost a week. And but they were drugged the whole time. Um, four days of, of, of travel in the back of this cart. Um, I had each one of them have a wake up at one point and see one thing during their travel. Um, and it was some pretty cool images and cool things that they saw. But they woke up in a jail cell in chains and they were kept there, drugged, or um, there, there was a magic wand of sleep. However, several of the players are elf or elf adjacent so they can't be s use magical sleeps so they use drugs as well and keep keep them sedated and then once a day they would wake them up and uh, some of them put them to manual labor so their bodies don't atrophy and they're still a little bit um a little strong and then they were going to be sold as slaves. Um, there were other NPCs there. One of them, a couple of them got sold. One of the two of them died. Uh, one of the player characters got sold as a slave, the raccoon man. So you'll like this, Robin. The latch last, the raccoon man got sold as a slave. And I had it to where, so they get in this carriage with this dark elf. And they're taking off. And this dark elf, she bought... This dark elf had bought the raccoon man as a slave for her sister as a birthday present. Well, turns out they find out pretty quick that the sister is allergic to the dander of the raccoon man. <laughs> so they ended up taking him back. Uh, but it was interesting to watch the player's reaction for a while as one of their, their people gets sold as a slave and leaves. It's like what are you doing? You split the party. What happened? So it was pretty fun. Um, so Spurf Neblin gnomes, I just call them dark gnomes or deep gnomes. <laughs> Almost as bad as Skaith She word in Kobold Press's Midgard, which is pronounced Skaith She. They're just shadow fae. Sounds like a drunk person ordering something late at night at Waffle House. There you go. I love Waffle House. We don't have any around here, sadly. We just finally got a Chick-fil-A, though. Woohoo! I'll have my hash browns and Smurf Neblin, please. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, and a, 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 and a side of Skate She, please. <laughs> and a large water. Ah, uh, poor guy. The raccoon people. New and improved hypoallergenic raccoon man. That's right. We don't have anywhere we live. I miss Waffle Houses so much. I had them in misery when we lived down in and when we lived in Georgia. Yep. So there's CeCe's Pizza that I would like to have here. There's. We now have Chick Fil A. Um, and Waffle House. Those are really the only three that I really care about. Um, CeCe's Pizza is a inexpensive place that back in the day like 10 years ago it was uh five dollars and and it was uh, a buffet place but the cool thing about them is they had tons of different pizzas and most of their pizzas came out half and half so it wasn't just pepperoni the other half was something else and they were very small slices so you could load up on one type if you liked it or like me you could just have like seven of these tiny sliced pizzas all different kinds oh, i loved it we have an ihop built on the waffle house structure 24 hour fast and good food back in the day 10 years ago <laughs> that's right well when you're as old as i am back in the day can can mean yesterday or 50 years ago All right, so now that my fancy ground decided to be nice and finally called me, 
we have where we are characters are second level. So and there he is. There's our raccoon man. Dun, 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 dun. Name is Carwin Dupal. He's a uh, wizard. I'm just going to open them all up. We have rugs, our kobold. Zweklos, our tiefling, and Lycus, our githyanki. So basically, this uh, githyanki and githzare were in fighting each other at one point, and they ended up escaping together on a, from a crash ship, ended up going cross planes sort of by accident and had to sort of work together. He is in love with her. She does is not in love with him. All right, so let's check them out. So if you want to look at the coding and things, the way I do it is I'm working on Prince of the Apocalypse at the moment, D&D &D prep. Nice. Thanks for stopping by, Drake. I appreciate it. Um, and I apologize, I did not do this earlier, but hey guys, if check out Drake Ticks, all the other one word, lots of uh, almost exclusively live play DM. Um, yeah, Oglin, his real name is Logan, so he, he just switched up to Oglin. Um, we were on the, they were exploring in Starfinder, this building that had 80 stories, uh, and they were on the 21st floor, and he, that's where, uh, some really weird stuff had happened there, so that's why, that's what that quote is from. Um, yep, Drake Takes does mostly exclusively live play Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, very lively groups. Um, but beyond that, Drake is one of those ones who makes... He makes me a better dungeon master because of what he does. Um, so in those days when I'm feeling lazy and don't really feel like going to look for a picture or a map... Or leaving an old map, or something. Um, I'm like, ah, crap. Drake would find a picture for this, so I better go do it. So uh, he's really good at what he does. He's a good character, voices. Um, so check him out. You won't regret it. And if you do regret it, too bad you followed him already. All right, so let's take a look. So what I do is I go to the abilities page, and I just click. If it's a new character, I just click on all of these, open them all up, and then check them one by one. In this case, uh, he is a second level, so I believe he just got the fighting style. Divine Schmite, I don't remember what level that is, so I'll check it, and then Divine Sense. Um, I believe that's the first level, so I'm not going to worry about that. I'll put Lay on Hands just because it's not first level, but I want to make sure it's, it's coded correctly. That's right, he does a mean uh, smoking cigarette female voice. So we don't have to worry about the trade proficiencies and languages because all those uh, and the, the feats, all those are already done. Um, so we don't have to worry about that because he just going up second level. All right, so divine sense is good. Divine smite. A 
if type is undead, it adds an extra damage. Okay, so that's set up correctly. Good. Lay on hands. 10. Let's make sure. So what I'm doing is I'm checking to see. Open up the magnifying glass here. And let's see. It looks like he... I don't know what this is. All right. Um, so there's a couple different ways of doing laying on hands because they can be done in single increments, increments of one hit point, or they can be done uh, increments of five hit points when you're, because you can use play on hands to heal remove a disease and stuff, or it can be done all at once. Um, I'm not sure what this does. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so what he did is he multiplied his paladin level. He has zero, so I guess it defaults to one, times his paladin level five times. which seems like a really odd way of doing it. But this guy is, is like one of my only players, if not my only player. Uh, well, I have two players, one who is a streamer himself, who knows Starfinder, and then I have this guy who's a not a streamer, but he's a DM, um, so he knows Fantasy Grounds. So I'm just going to leave it that way. I'm not sure why he had it set up that way, but I'm not for him. I'm not going to mess with it. So it looks like he's got everything: Divine Sense, Lay on Hands, Divine Smite. Oh, he does not seem to have the Blessed Warrior, so. You learn two cantrips of your choice. They count as paladins and... All right, so that's all that his fighting style gives him is he learns two cantrips. So, Guidance and Sacred Flame. Okay. All right, do I make sure that he... I did notice something weird here, fighting style. So yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this one. Boom, all right. So he is done. Put a fork in him, he is done. Drake says, to me having at least a change in the speed of your voice when you are talking for a character or an NPC really helps me get in roleplay mode. I sort of imagine Paige as a fast talker. And Robin responded, yeah, I think he would be a fast talker too uh, and act like a know-it-all sometimes. With rune, artifact, architect, and magic for sure, yeah. I agree. So uh, changing your, your, the speed of your voice. Um, my thing is, uh, I usually take two, two things. Um, one is if you pick, say, okay, I'm going to do a Scottish accent. Just don't say it out loud what you're trying to do, and then do and then try it and speak that way. The point is, when I speak, for example. As long as we know it's not Sven talking, then you've that that's it. You've done it. Win. It could, your my Scottish accent could sound like a Mexican speaker, native Mexican uh, Spanish speaker. Who cares? It's not me. As long as you don't say, "Hey, I'm doing my Arnold Schwarzenegger voice." Hey, y'all, how you doing? This is my Arnold Schwarzenegger voice. Well, if you say what it is, then, yeah, everybody's going to mock you and make fun of you. But if you don't say what it is, you say, hey, here, I'm right close, and this is what I sound like, then they know it's not Sven. So 
you're good to go. Um, and that's the whole point. As long as we can, when you, when the player talks, if we know it's not the player talking, then you have one D and D in my opinion. Um, I also watched the video and I've been trying to incorporate a lot more. If you actually do physically do stuff, uh, hunch over if you're talking like an old woman or like I was just doing a country guy and swinging my shoulders. If you get into the physical aspects of it, especially if you're on camera, it makes it a little bit better. Atomic Hero Squad. Hey, I was sleeping this morning, dude, so I'm sorry I missed your stream this morning. But yesterday's was a lot of fun. He played some of my favorite games. He was playing Gems of War. Um, which is a, a game uh, I'm up. I, I've after playing for about a year, um, not religiously, but off and on. Um, I'm up to level 176. It's one of the few games I've actually kept on my phone. He is at some insane number, like 300, level 300. Um, he also did Blades, which is a Morrowind, Oblivion, um, Skyrim, however, whichever one of those versions of the Elder Scrolls reality on your phone. He plays it on Twitch, um, but Blades is awesome. So I enjoy watching him play that. Uh, he also does Asphalt 9 Legends driving game. Um, and then a whole slew of other uh, Smite and Paladin and um, some some other cool games that he does. So yesterday was G.O.W., which those of us cool kids call Gems of War and Blades. Um, and I enjoyed it. Yeah, 450-something. Yeah, it's, it's, he's crazy. Um that's a lot of fun. The cool thing about Gems of War is uh, it's, a, it's a puzzle game. So match three, like Witch Saga or Bubble Quest or um, Candy Crush, Toy toy Store, uh, forget, forget what one, there's a toy one as well. But unlike those other stupid things where all you do is just, they just add more crap to it and just make it more insane and more difficult to do, you're actually doing stuff. It's like a puzzle quest game, which I love, um, where you are you have heroes and you have uh, things that you're building up. Um, I also play Magic the Gathering Puzzle Quest uh, and I actually stream it too. And... Um, So you can check me out playing Magic the Gathering Puzzle Quest. I'm going to be doing some of that later today. Uh, but the point is, with these type of games, you're not just matching. Uh, all your matches have a point and have a goal. You're, you're powering spells or you're empowering heroes or you're powering special attacks and things like that. Trying to keep your other players, from your opponents, from matching theirs. Um, you're, you, have, you can target different opponents depending on what they're doing to you um, so there's a whole game and with gems of war there are just off the top of my head at least a dozen if not closer to 20 different game modes different games different guild things you can do storylines um, daily quests there's all these different ways uh, that you can play and in this um, i'm still and I've been playing it almost a year and a half now, and I'm still learning different. How do I do the forge? How do I do this? Because there's all these different things that you can do, um, and it's really cool. I love it. I like it. I love it. So check it out. Um, another battle pass coming out in Schmite. Nice. Yeah, remedies. Something I learned about her in the last several months um, is Remedies used to be a big streamer uh, like Atomic in that, you know, gameplay streamer, uh, platform streamer, uh, or PC, you know, that type of thing. The point is now she does a lot of D&D &D stuff. She used to do other regular, um, you know, what Twitch is more known for uh, type of streaming stuff. 
So, and big anime fan. So we had the whole conversation about that yesterday. Esports coverage. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Uh, went to like ten smite tourneys in the span of three years. Oh, that's cool. Cool, cool. Impressive. Yeah, from what I've seen of smite, um, it's not my style of play. I'm not. I wouldn't be a very good at that. I did StarCraft Two, World of Warcraft. I don't know what DTOA, uh, I get my mind going blank on that one. Um, a long time ago, though, but still naturally part of who I am. That's right. So I used to be a soldier, carefree, worry-free, messing around. Now, settle down with a family. First mobile-style game, DTOA. DOTA. Um, most com most competitive of them all. Wow. Okay. No League of Legends, huh? Oh no, LOL is is League of Legends. There you go. I wasn't sure if you were laughing out loud or League of Legends. <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah, my thing is I don't really like team games of those of that nature i don't really like those type of games period but if i'm going to play one i'd rather because i don't have friends who will actually play with me so i would rather just run around on my own let me fight the computer don't mess with pvp because i'm always going to be outclassed just let me run around do so for my own so um so that's why i like games like skyrim and and um, stuff like that. The only one that I really got into and, and I really enjoy is Star Wars Battlefront. Both the original and now the newest one that, that's out now. Um, I, I really enjoy both of those and I'm actually somewhat good at those. I'm trying Spellbreak. Uh, I, I, if you want a good laugh, you can watch my stream of Spellbreak. Um, I am horrendous at it. I'm so bad. It's definitely not my wheelhouse trying to uh, shoot people and run around not get shot. Uh, I'm terrible at this. Uh, but uh, I might try it a couple more times before I hang up my hat. But uh, spell break is really cool. Battlefront streams in the future. Well, the problem is, long story short, I don't have an Xbox One anymore. So... If I ever get a Battlefront, I may, um, I mean, if I ever get a, a Xbox One again, I may try to figure out how to stream from the Xbox, and then I would do it that way. Robin says she's not fond of the shooter games like PUBG and stuff. Yeah, PUBG, Star Spellbreak is um, PUBG, Fortnite, but with spells. It's really cool. Um, so, uh, so spell break is, uh, I don't know how new it is, but I think it's been out maybe a year at most, but it's relatively new compared to these other ones, but it's basically, the, it's, it's the same concept of where you're, it's a battleground where you're, you drop onto an Island, the circle gets smaller as you go and just last man standing or last team standing, um, but it's with spells and you have the spells interact with each other. So I can cast a tornado, but then a fire person can fire up the tornado. So now it's a fire tornado. I can get a cloud of toxic fumes and then a lightning guy can hit it. And now it's a cloud of lightning toxic fumes. Um, so uh, it's a lot of fun. And again, it's called spell break all one word, but I'm, uh, and like I said, if you want to check out my video on it, check out those. I have a playlist of one spell break, and you can see me just get trashed. The thing I do, though, is I go to an outlying area, grab all the cool stuff, because they have special artifacts and stuff. And I just slowly try to sneak in, work my way in, try to snipe uh, from a distance. 
typically what happens is I go in and then get destroyed. So, because I'm just not very good at those type of games. I play like three games of Smite a week. Uh, Atomic played uh, some spell break when it came out. Oh, nice. All right. The other thing is, too, I'm using a keyboard. So not that the controller would help me all that much, but uh, it is a little bit cumbersome using a keyboard for me, um, the way I play. So anyway, I appreciate you guys hanging out. Uh, you know I'm not getting much work done, but that's all right. I don't mind. I enjoy talking, saying hi. So let's check out Rugs. He is pretty much the opposite of Lycos. Uh, he he is very consistent. He's a great player. He's always there. He's reliable. He's going to show up on time. Um, but he just does not feel comfortable role playing, um, and doesn't know much about fancy grounds. Um, so he's just quiet, sits there. He'll res respond if you interact with him. But for the most part, he just is there. So, um, and that's great. As long as the whole point is that you have fun, and as long as he's having fun and enjoying himself, great. I don't. I try not to push him too hard. I don't want him to be uncomfortable and take away the fun that he does have uh, by making him role play. So uh, we try to interact with him sometimes um, as characters and NPCs and stuff like that. As a DM, I'll call upon him certain times to do certain things. Um, but he's a great guy. Uh, so let's see. Dart. He has 10 darts. The reason I was checking that out because I noticed here his ammo is zero under his darts. So now we have 10. All right, so He's playing a kobold monk, um, so it's it's pretty fun. It's pretty cool so far. Um, so at second level, a monk, you get key points. There we go. So those are all set up correctly. Boom, I set this, this up all for him on the night we leveled up. All right, so that was easy enough. Just make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, we're not going to use this. Unarmored defense, unarmored movement. Oh, wait, did I change his movement? Second level, his speed increases by 10 feet. Let's make sure that worked. It did not. All right, so. Bink. Speed, miscellaneous, 10. All right, so he's a fast little bugger, 40 feet for his cobalt. All right, so he's done. I don't know where to wanderer, key, okay, good. Wizards don't get a whole lot at level two as far as special abilities. Is, did they pick up their schools at second level? Um, or was it, I thought it was first level. I'm, I'm forgetting. All right, so Zweklos is sort of in between the two. Zweklos is a great role player but knows virtually nothing about Fancy Grounds um, and how the ins and outs and coding and all that stuff. Let's just go to our Wizard. So if you want to know the specifics and are too lazy to reach all the way over like four feet, have to stand up and grab your player's handbook and then flip pages. You just want to see what wizards do. You go here to the class level, click the magnifying glass that opens up this. And then you just click this little um, button down here underneath the level up. And it pulls up the info on wizards. And then if I go all the way down to the bottom, it tells you what they get at each level.
All right, second level, is there arcane tradition? Okay. So, arcane tradition, click. So, she's picking... Divination. All right, so that's what I need to set up for her, is her divination. Portent, that's what it's called. Uh, did I do that already? Looks like I did. So, Portent, 1914 self. Okay, perfect. So I did that, and I linked it. Okay, good. All right. So, what I like to do when I add any kind of um, slots uh, or any kind of coding on their actions page here in their link I like to link the actual power itself from the abilities page fill that in so that they don't have to go back and forth all I have to do is just click what well, do what does that do boom it tells them right there so so that's all she gets at second level uh, so again, an ammo is zero, so let's go and sling ammo. So sling is just going to be 20. Sling is easy. You always carry 20 rocks around with you. Hand crossbow right now, she only has two crossbow bolts because they picked this up from dead guys. She only has one dagger right now, so ammo is one. All right, so last, uh, next to last, we have our raccoon person. Whimsical Heroes, DM's Guild. Go buy it right now. Uh, and School of Abjuration. I know nothing of the School of Abjuration, so let's, what does it do? Blocks, banishes, or protects. Okay. So you get Arcane Ward. Ward. Again, a great role player. Arguably one of my best two role players. Um, top two. But knows nothing of Fancy Grounds. So abjuration, Robin uh, Remedy says it's the wizards that laugh. Ha <laughs> ha! Can't touch me or my friends. Yeah, abjuration. <sighs> Abjure this. Weaving magic around yourself for protection. When you cast an abjuration spell, first level, how you can simultaneously use a strand of the spell's magic to create a magical ward. On yourself that lasts until you finish a long rest. Damn! So hit points equals twice your level uh, modifier when we take damage. So temporary hit points. Why just say temporary hit points? You dork. All right. Um, if this damage reduces the wizard to zero, you take any remaining damage. Okay. You, all right, so the hit points, so f I, first of all, let's go down here to open her up and see what she's got. Wizard stuff, arcane recovery. All right, so we will put her ward. I presume Rob has done the work for me. Let's check it out. Wizard, Arcane Ward. Boom. Okay. Seven temporary hit points, so let's open this up. Wiz, wiz, int. All right.
Excellent. So that one's done. So that what that does is it applies it to herself. And she it's her second favorite wizard school, Remedy says. Cool. Um, the wizards I played are was is Devination and a boy that I have fun with him. Uh, I got to where the, the players would all come. The char other characters would come. Every morning we would start and I would tell their future, do their horoscope for the day type thing. Um, and when I would use my portents, ah, I've seen this. Um, it was really cool. I had a lot of fun with him. And an illusionist, my other wizard I've used. It's only two I've used up to this point. I've got two new campaigns starting. One is a one shot, and one's another one. I might use wizard for those. My my f good biggest flavor with my wiz my illusionist was he was a fire genasi. Uh, lived with a fire genasi clan out in an island out uh, by over by Chult, uh, north of Chult, and so he was an inheritor. Was his background. And he inherited his spell book, which was two slabs of magma with these slices of mal of, of uh, mica for mica in the middle. So it, was, it was a stone spell book that uh, he would carefully carry around with him. Magical. All right. Um, okay, so it says whenever you take damage, it's temporary hit points, yeah. When it has zero hit points, it doesn't absorb damage, but it remains. And whenever you cast another spell of first level higher, it regains the number of hit points. You go twice the level of the spell. So it regains. Okay, so it never goes above seven, and it just gains back a little bit more if you've taken some of that damage. All right, nice. Okay, enough of abjuration. Transmutation is my all-time favorite, or conjuration, little army summoners. And transmutation is pretty high up there for me, too. Yeah, Starfinder has, you can focus on summoners. Uh, one weird little, nice little thing I like that they do for summoning spells in Starfinder is you start the spell on your turn but it takes you a full round you're, you're, you cast you start the spell then your turn ends while you're still casting the spell when it comes back around to you at the start of your next turn your creatures show up and you still have your full round of actions that second round but um, it makes it a cool dynamic because while you're that you have that whole the enemies have that whole round of their actions to try to stop you or try to do something else. Um, and if you get hit in Starfinder, there is no concentration. Um, if you get hit, the spell's done. Um, but your summoned creatures are whole other party members and whole other summoned creatures, so. Um, it's pretty cool. It's an interesting dynamic. I like it. Okay, so she is... What the heck is she again? She's a saucer. So they get their meta magic at level 2. Well, their font of magic, rather. They get their sorcery points. Um, they don't actually get to do anything besides get spell points slots back until level 3. But... Alright, so we're going to go ahead and add... Let's see. I'm just going to have a whole section of meta magic. So we'll just drop it under action. 
change it. So if we, if we pull something from the spells and drop it into an already established section, then it'll automatically add it to that section. If you just drop it, it'll make a whole new section. It usually says it'll default to spell. This one's going to be meta magic. So see, for example, right now it doesn't say anything. So we open this up, start at level two, school. Um, so this is going to be close this up and we open up her abilities, go to open this up and So we're just going to copy, control A, control C, control V. There you go, boom. Will it let you bold in this? It does, all right, so control B, just like any other. And I wouldn't have to clean this up. I mean, it's still readable, but I'm just that type of guy likes making sure everything is as correct as I can make it. All right, so there's all your stuff. The uh, source of this is the player's handbook. Source is not sorcerer. Source is the book it's in. And well, never mind. This is it probably a sorcerer. Um, I forget. D and D is a little different in how it's set up. Um, because if you go into open up the spells, the source is uh, is either the school of magic or uh, your class. So it's it's not the literal meaning of source. Anyway. Point is, she doesn't have to go back to here. So let's see. I don't think she has any of the other stuff in her. So let's see if we. She's got. Uh, this one, storm sorcery. Okay, we do have that tempestuous magic, tempestuous, tempestuous magic. All right, so I do not have this. Let's see if it's here. It is not, so we'll double check. So what we're going to do with this one is it doesn't actually do anything. It's not an attack. Um, it doesn't interact with other players. Um, What it does is whenever she casts a starting at first level, you can use a bonus action to cause whirling gusts of elemental air to briefly surround you before or after you cast a spell of first level or higher. and allows you to fly to 10 feet without provoking up attack to opportunity. So because this doesn't actually do anything per se, 
Okay, she does have it. I did put it on there. See, I know what the, I know what the hell I'm doing. It's in her um, storm magic. Bonus action, move 10 feet after spellcasting. Cool. All right. So we are finished, folks. We are done with this. Um, with these coding things I want to get done, we can cross it off on our list. Squidgy, squidgy, squidgy. Last thing I'm going to do with this one is, again, check my message of the day. I also, one thing I do for all my campaigns is I have a people in places note. Um, as a player, I typically don't take notes. And I should, as a caveat, I should say, I, when I first started playing, I was the note taker. I notated everything. I have now since gotten uh, swung all the way to the other extreme to where I don't take any notes at all. And so to help my players, I have notes called People and Places. And here we go. Boom. And it is just what it says. It's a list of places and people for uh, my players to reference also for me to reference so anytime they have an interaction with a, a, a named PC that I think is important in a perfect world I will add it to this note um, I will also add images links within here um, so that's why I don't um, so that's why I like having this here because I don't take notes, you know, when I'm, I obviously have my story notes as a DM, but if they, uh, I do a lot of stuff on the, on the cuff, uh, off the cuff rather, uh, on the fly and make up names and, and peoples and interactions. So if the, the group does this, uh, and, and interact with a new a new person now that I think might come back later or is important, then I add it to the people and places. That way I don't forget. Um, Robin does the same thing. When I DM, I find it too hard to remember to take notes. So I stream recording just so I can rewatch everything and, put, and then put notes. Yep. Yep. I agree. So what I did this time, now is I said, hey, players, who wants to be my note taker? So this guy said he would do it. So this is one he made that's public. So everybody can see it. So now I can go in. Uh, I can check and make sure the spelling are correct of everybody. Um, and so I'm going to actually take this down here. Make a new one real quick. And put the other players here. Control X. So I'm just going through uh, and tweaking what he has in here already. So like he has a misspelled word. How dare he, he's fired forever. Um, he also does a lot of weird, uh, on Baldur's not with an E, it's with an U. But I can then take the images and add them in. So let's see. We'll go with so for example, there's stool. There he is. He's a 
two and a half feet tall mushroom guy. Sort of walks like R2-D2. E -e 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 -e. And the party is in love with him. Definitely a party favorite. A squat. Again, boy, this guy cannot type. Mushroom-looking creature that gives off spores when it shakes. The spores appear to give some telepathic communication of some sort. Because he's a fun guy, absolutely. That's why he's always invited to all the parties. He is a myconid, exactly. Um, just a, but just a sort of like a baby one. All right, and then we have. So several of these people are dead now. So one of the challenges of this campaign is you have, I want to say it's 10, it might be a dozen other prisoners that they start you with. And it is a bear trying to keep track of who does what, who knows things. Um, I have run this one, at least started running it. Uh, two or three times um, and I'm still like having pictures up uh, cheat sheets um, three by five cards with names and, and who and what and motivations um, so this time I just killed most of them um, one of them was sold into slavery another one um, was beaten to death by one of the other prisoners um, and then so the other one committed suicide because they were um, brother and sister who were stressed out and freaked out enough as it was and then when her she lost her brother she just gave up and killed herself um, so and then during their escape two more of them died so all they're left with right now in the party is Shushar the fish man and Stool the mushroom guy he is a kuatoa fish man shushar isn't that the same one they did before the same quote I have 20, like 20 quotes. Why is it giving me the same quote? It is. It's the same quote. Boo. just seems odd that out of a random 20 sided two or three times it's done the same quote anyway moving on so let's see what else we've got we've got L death she was a shield dwarf who died made her to made one of the Got a promise from one of the player characters to return her gear. This is a PC, so we're going to move her over to the PCs. Here's Ilvara. She was there. Lady Ilvara is the woman who is 
in charge of the slave trade in Velkenvelv, the location they were taking. I'm just moving things around. I like them to be in alphabetical order, and I'm also making sure that they're. Uh, he's missing um, Carwin for some reason. Oh, there it is. No, he's not. I just hadn't gone down far enough. Bupito, he was a cool dude as well. He he died as well. He was the one who um, was an old guy. He tried to escape by stealing the keys off a guard. He succeeded, but the guard quickly found out when he went to go. The guard quickly realized his keys were missing when he went to go lock the cell. So when he, they found that he had stolen the keys, they then threw him over the edge, fed him to the spiders, threw him down into the webs below. All right, I'm trying to, f let me see the other, uh, Skipping back, finding the other players. Here we go. There's no picture of Jorlin. They never knew his name anyway. Here it is. Sure. Oh no, Shore is the guy who took over. Topsy and Turvy. So we have two pictures of them. They were actually were rats, although. So they were the brother and sister. The players never found out they were were rats. They just look like dark gnomes. Sarath, that's his name. He was the one that was sold into slavery. He was a drow. And then there's Ront, R-O-N-T. He's an orc. He was captured by the... He's the one that died helping them... Um, Escape. Went into a room full of quagoth, which are basically yeti, but without the snow. <laughs> so this is a this is a quagoth who is well dressed quagoth. They normally don't do this, but this one is insane. He also died fighting his brother, Quagoth. Oh, this guy is the wrong one. All right. We don't have pictures of this guard one. Cool. So they have the rest of them.
Baldur's Gate Drow Prison. So I'm going to go ahead and put the map here. No, I don't want that one. I want the side view map. Where's the side view map? Don't know if I ever showed them this map or not. I'm just going to go ahead and put this here. Baldur's B U R. Okay. All right. So yeah, that's the prison where they were kept. You got the waterfall. You've got where they were kept. Uh, the Quagoth den, although it was not lit. All right, so we have finished doing what I wanted to do, which is get all the characters on there. We looked at the notes. Let's take a look at the message of the day. So this is the one, by the way, where I use the calendar. some point I need to open up the, the player view to see exactly what shows where but so you see these are all blue whereas in the other calendar I was using they were all red because red means players can see it so so this is what happened they know on the 20th of Kythorn that that's where they met up, um, and at about eight o'clock at night, they saw the mud Mef method harassing these skeletal wolves, and they destroyed them. But then the rest of the time, they don't know anything else. Um, but I, on the other hand, have all of the information here. So boom, it tells them exactly what happened, who was left alive, um, links to pictures, links to storylines, because I was using these, the calendar, as my notes. And I've done the same thing since they've left. So now that they left, um, let's see. So here they, they left, the party fights back, manages to drop them onto the floor. Um, so they're at pursuit level floor four with no encounters. And now they've come into this, they came into a magnum cave with these this fire lichen. Next day, this is what uh, they start at two in the morning. Um, they finish f uh, at just after midnight. And they start again at 830. Again, they don't know any of this. They don't know, they have no concept of time. They just know that they traveled for so many hours. Um, and then and this is what's going to happen next time. Um, this is the third. Then on the fourth. So I've, ro I've rolled in advance all of the random encounters and things. So I'm not trying to put things together on the fly. I've already done all this. I know what happened each time. So... Um, this is a cool little uh, map that I tweaked. I added water effects here. So there's a mm, nice little treasure that they find under the water here. I add a line of sight um, to this. I added some shadows in here. So tweaked this map, made it special, changed the color of the grid. All right, so that gives you an idea of how I use the calendar and what to use it for. Unlike the other one, I don't share the time and the date. I normally keep my this highlighted. So this is two days before the start of the game. And 
I just leave it there. Uh, so, so the players don't know what day it is or what time it is or anything like that. So, the, uh, this was the, the people lost. You have all the images for the people that they lost, people left. So, we're going to change all this. What is this? This is oh, that's the player map. So this is no longer the map that they're going to use. What just happened? Okay. I don't know what that was. So we're just going to clear all this out. For the message of the day. The group managed to escape from the prison by dropping into the webs and into the water below. To hit control one to change that from a heading to regular text. When we last left, they were they had just climbed a cliff. Opening up the calendar again to remind me my myself. So let's see, this is they left on the first. No, they left on a second of flame rule. Come on, there we go. So this was a magma cave they came to. I closed off and built walls around where places didn't want them to go. Traveled for hours and came upon a lava cave where they found some lichen. So this lichen is just spice. You put, put it in, in fire lichen, you put it in food, and it makes it spicy. So the message of the day is going to be especially nice for them because they don't have the luxury of a calendar to look back on. Um, they rested and found... They had tapped into new powers. As they were looking Or a place to stop. So those of you who've watched before, you may have seen me working on this map as well. Not sure why it was so tiny. 
what I took and made sure there was line of sight and then added this cliff face. And that's where we left off. They had climbed up the cliff face. So they are now threat level threat level three because so the, the different there's different levels of threat that they have. Um, if they ever get to level zero, then they they're not chased anymore. Um, threat level five, they are discovered. This was April, Wednesday, 14th. All right, so that's where we start for the night. Um, they're now at the threat level three because they, when they climbed the 60 foot cliff, they took these rope ladders that were with them that were hanging down um, and took them with them. So it slows down their pursuers. They are being chased by the, the drows that had them captive. They use rope ladders lowered by rugs and then took the rope ladder took one of the rope ladders with them few minutes later they stop for the night all right so And that's where we left off. So there's no map to share with them. Uh, I don't have any pictures. So um, I think I'll put the uh, lava cave in there for them. Um, and I think I'll put the the other map in there as well because I took the time to do it man there you go so they have both pictures if they want to look at them we will see
all right, so we will see who does read that. It says, if you read this far, PM me and I'll give your character 50 experience points. So I'll probably leave that there twice until they all get into the habit of reading it, and then I will uh, take it away. But thanks for hanging out with me, guys. Uh, check out this and other ones if you are interested in um, my YouTube channel. Uh, tomorrow I'll be doing Starfinder. And then if you want to see how this actually plays out, not this one, but the first one we were working on, Wednesday night, tomorrow night, uh, 5.30. Thank you, Remedies, for hanging out with me. I, I appreciate it. Enjoy chatting with you guys. Um, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out Remedies. Check out Atomic Hero Squad. Check out Drake Takes. Uh, whatever else you do, enjoy the rest of your day.